Hello, my name is Porter Anderson. I am the editor in chief of Publishing Perspectives magazine. We are the news medium of Frankfurt Book Fair, and we're very glad to have you join us. We are coming to you thanks to the Sheikh Zayed Book Award, and we are in Sheikh Zayed season, as a matter of fact, as the winners are announced around this time every year during the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair, which this year runs the 23rd to the 29th of May, we will be celebrating the winners. And we're excited because there's a connection here. You're going to meet him in just a moment. Joining me for our conversation today are two great people. We're very glad to have them with us. Uh, Renaud Kubaj is the Director General of the Tamar Institute for Community Education in Palestine. And Ahmed Rashad is the CEO of Dar al Masriya al Lubnania in Egypt. And Ahmed is our connection to one of the winners of this year's Sheikh Zayed Book Awards. The Publishing and Technology Award has gone to an extraordinary project in Egypt. It's called the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, not quite Alexandria as we know the ancient library, but it is a tribute. It's an homage and a living, very highly teched up beautiful library on the, sea, on the Mediterranean Sea. And Ahmed is familiar with it, aren't you, Ahmed? You know this project very well. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, Alexandria Library deserve, I think, um, not because I'm Egyptian, but I'll tell you that the library deserve this prize. Uh, they make uh, huge projects in the last maybe 20, 21 years. Um, um, many projects, uh, very selective board members to, to think about what would be new for this library. Uh, so I think they deserve this prize. It's so beautiful too. I know the, the great hall uh, where most of the work happens on 11 different levels is 20,000 square feet. It's just gigantic and designed, I understand, by a Norwegian architecture firm, which is fascinating. Um, if, am I right? I believe that it, it at least originally was set to have Arabic, uh, English, and French as its languages. But as you and I have been talking, you were saying perhaps Greek may be involved too, yeah? Yes, yes, but the main languages are English, uh, Arabic, of course, Arabic and English and French, yeah. but maybe there are other languages also. Uh, maybe even on the walls, uh, you will find different languages, different Greek languages. Uh, the design itself, it was from the old design from ancient Greek. Uh, it was made, but with a modern, uh, modern style. Uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a very, very, very nice library when you enter. Uh, it's one of the best libraries, I think, all over the world. Mm, mm, I'm sure of it. It's, it's a wonderful win. It's great to see this happen. The recognition from the Sheikh Zayed Book Award is fantastic. And I can't wait to see the Bibliotheca yes. Alexandrina the first time. It, it will be my first visit, so I'm very excited. So thank you for telling us about that. Um, Renaud, may I, may I start with you? Our, our topic today is, is the publisher's viewpoint on what impact awards have. Certainly the Sheikh Zayed Book Award is one of the wealthiest in the world. It has nine categories. It's a very extensive award. And the, the entire year is used in the submission and selection project. It's quite rigorous. And this is why, of course, so many of its laureates are so successful and so well known. Renaud, in, in your experience, uh, first tell us, if you will, a bit about the Tamar Institute. And then tell us your experience with the, award, with the award in terms of what kind of impact it can have on the recognition of your work. Thank you so much uh, for providing this opportunity to speak up about uh, Tamir Institute and about uh, the publishing uh, sector in the uh, Arab world and about the trends uh, in terms of uh, reading and so on within um, uh, within the children and the young adults community as we are specialized in this uh, area. Tamir Institute for Community Education is based in uh, Palestine uh, and it was established in 1989 during the first intifada where there were a massive closure of schools and university uh, by the Israeli occupation. So um, the formal uh, education system was completely uh, disrupted by these uh, closures. So um, uh, uh, the uh, founders of the organization were part of um, 
the community, uh, popular education um, uh, movement uh, in uh, Palestine. Uh, and at that moment, they uh, thought of the importance of having an organization uh, that would uh, go on uh, with uh, knowledge transformation uh, through the informal uh, education. So this is the establishment of Tamer Institute uh, in 1989. And the main program of Tamer Institute is to promote uh, reading, writing, expressive art within um, uh, the children's and young adults uh, communities uh, through, of course, uh, uh, interactive means of um, uh, learning, which is it can be, uh, any, uh, it can be whether it is a, a storytelling or illustration or puppet making. And of course, as we go on, uh, the new uh, techniques and the new uh, tools have been improved and are connected now to social medias and to new uh, tools like, you know, uh, the filmmaking, the podcasting and so on. Uh, so uh, it's been like, you know, 30 years of experience uh, working with children and young adults to promote their uh, means of uh, expression and, of course, to uh, build up their self-esteem and their voices to the uh, community and to the uh, world as well. This is and in a brief. <laughs> this is fantastic work you're doing, and it's it's wonderful in a way because this this would have come in at, at the first intifada, I believe, and right. and yet here is this marvelous legacy now being built of education and youth development in the community, family development, um, that's still going. It, it's great when something comes out of uh, such an experience. What is your, what is your experience with the, the Sheikh Zayed Book Award in particular, and with, with your understanding of the impact of awards in general? Um, are they helpful? Mm. Uh, definitely, the children's uh, sector have been, uh, and the children's publication have been improved a lot in the last uh, 30 years. So if we uh, are looking at the history of uh, children's literature, uh, and definitely it started uh, from Egypt, Lebanon, uh, and uh, so on 100 years uh, ago. But uh, maybe the Arab world always looked at children's literature, not from an empowering uh, point of view, it's more of uh, children. So when things come to the children, we do not uh, give it this uh, powerful uh, meaning, uh, even for um, yani, uh, the writers. So one story that I know of about uh, Ahmad Shawfi, like, uh, when he was uh, writing for the children in the beginning, he did not write his name because it is directed for the children, you know, so this kind of, uh, in a way, uh, does not provide this uh, legacy or this, uh, um, you know, um, a privilege of uh, writing. Uh, but later on, of course, you know, he was very well known for uh, children writing, what I'm talking about, uh, the start in the beginning. And this is the same case for uh, many writers, even until now. So like when you ask the writer, do you write for the children? So they look, some of them, they would look at you from, you know, children, no, um, yeah, yeah, uh, and adults writings. Although the challenges for uh, writing uh, for children is, uh, much bigger than uh, writing for uh, adults because like when you are uh, and this is maybe we'll speak up uh, about it uh, later you know definitely uh, there are criteria uh, that we need to take into consideration when we are uh, uh, writing for the children like you know the child perspective it's very important always to have the child perspective in our mind and our heart when we are uh, writing for uh, children um, so, uh, yani, uh, so the last 30 years, definitely, uh, it improved a lot and uh, uh, the whole uh, movement of uh, publishing for children um, uh, yani went uh, from, um, yeah, from one level to uh, a better level. Now, the awards in the Arab world or worldwide uh, as well, uh, definitely uh, it is a, a way of um, um, celebrating um, 
a book and also celebrating individuals and celebrating uh, a publishers. So awards can be a uh, part of the celebration uh, of the books uh, as Yani, uh, one uh, aspect and definitely uh, through uh, the awards in the um, Arab world as well, maybe uh, uh, world uh, wide, um, you know, it builds up kind of uh, the social network uh, for the publishers, for the writers, for the illustrators. And from our experience as uh, Tamer Institute, you know, definitely many writers, many illustrators have been introduced to us as well through these uh, awards. Like, you know, as, as a Tamer Institute, you know, we always wait for Alma's awards uh, results in uh, Sweden to see who's the winner. Then this winner is going to be, uh, you know, a potential uh, a person that we uh, will uh, try to reach for translation and uh, so uh, on. Uh, so this is also uh, definitely another uh, aspect and also uh, awards definitely kind of a voice and also kind of a way of reaching out for different uh, countries. Like, you know, with the award um, that we got in 2019, the book that we uh, got it, you know, definitely it was translated to uh, different languages, like at least six languages uh, around the uh, world, like, you know, uh, English, French, uh, German, uh, Greek, uh, Portuguese. Uh, so it is one way of uh, uh, introducing this book uh, to the uh, whole world. But if we are talking about uh, selling and selling in the Arab world, this is another level of uh, our discussion. Maybe I will stop here and then I will continue uh, later. So oh. in order to uh, and have the space for uh, my colleague to speak up, I don't know. Sure, no, that, that's very gracious of you. And I, I will want to return to you and ask about the sales aspects because this is something very interesting to us too. I, 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 I love, well, I don't love it, but I think it's fascinating to know that originally the writers were not wanting to be known, that, that writing for children was something you, you didn't talk about too much. Because now, you know, it, it seems to have changed completely. And for two people, often there's the author and there's the illustrator who can also become very celebrated in her own right or his own right which is great. I, I think that, I hope this means that the entire international industry has evolved a little bit to understand, as you say, how difficult writing for children is and how tricky the criteria are. And the same for the artwork. Um, I, I try to make sure that, that publishers remember to credit both the illustrator and the author, because certainly, I mean, speaking of sales, which we'll come back to, but when the parents are walking through the bookstore, it's the illustrator's work that catches their eye. You know, then the story is probably wonderful as well, but it's those illustrations that probably do more of the sales work than the text until they read it and love it. So these, these are very good points that you're making and congratulations, by the way, too, from 2019. It's great to hear so many translations have uh, come to the book, that's, that's awesome. Now, Ahmed, if we may turn to you and then we'll be back to uh, talk some more with Renaud. Um, you, ha you have a string of Sheikh Zayed Book Awards, don't you? You've, you've been very successful with the, with the program. Okay, uh, let me first introduce myself. I'm the CEO of Al Dar Masraya, as you had mentioned. I'm the second right. generation in Al Masraya Libnaniya. Uh, our publishing house was established from uh, 1985. The founder was Mr. Muhammad Rashad, my father. Um, we are a general publisher. We publish in all sectors. Uh, uh, and maybe, and maybe that's one of the main reasons uh, why we won the prize in different categories in the last uh, sixteen or fifteen years. Um, we published in now like around two thousand hundred titles in uh, various fields. Maybe in the last twelve or thirteen years, we focused more on uh, fiction and literature. Uh, because that's the trend and maybe we can get back to this uh, question about the trends and how things change in publishing industry, uh, whether in the Arabic world or in Egypt uh, specifically. Um, of course, whenever we win a prize, we, we, we won the first prize in 2007 in children's literature, in 2009 as the best publisher and distributor in the Arab world, in 2014 in literature, 2016 
literature and 2017 young adult author. Uh, each each prize of of them uh, have a certain uh, had have, have a, cer a certain thing or makes us uh, feel of a different uh, feel of success. For example, in 2007, uh, in children's literature, it was the first maybe the first the, the beginning of the award. Uh, you know, always the awards. It was when it was announced the award in 2006. Um, it was one of the, and still it's one of the wealthiest uh, prizes in uh, in the region and maybe in the world. Uh, 200 uh, 200,000 US dollars. It's a big amount of money. The PR even uh, of the prize uh, was very huge when it was launched. Even naming the prize with uh, Sheikh Zayed that means a lot for Abu Dhabi and means a lot for publishing industry. And means a lot for culture as a whole. So uh, when we won the first prize, it had uh, a great meaning for us. At the same time, when we won it, the series which won, uh, it was uh, 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 it was for young adults. And there is a big lake of uh, series for young adults in the region. And maybe Renat can say this: we have a, a big lake of uh, books for uh, young adults. So it was a success for us. 2009, when we won the prize as the best publisher, uh, it was we were the first uh, private publisher to win this prize. Of course, when you see something like this, especially for my father and the founder of the publishing house, to win the prize for the first time, to be the private publisher to win this prize, of course, it means a lot and means that you did a great achievement. Uh, 2014 uh, had a different um, feel of success because the writer wasn't uh, wasn't known, uh, and we we didn't we didn't hear about the writer or we didn't hear about uh, uh, his works before. But just the editorial team had saw the novel and they were uh, happy from it. Uh, they made a great job. Uh, so to win the prize without any uh, notice uh, about the writer himself means a lot. 2016 was for one of the greatest writers for, for literature and fiction in the Arab world, uh, Ibrahim Abdel Megid, and it was part of his biography and part of his success. So that's another meaning. And uh, Ibrahim Abdel Megid uh, uh, is one of the writers who deserve to win this prize and we were happy for, for him for that. 2017 uh, for uh, Summer Rains, uh, this is a new writer uh, and uh, he was the first uh, writer, uh, Egyptian writer to win uh, this, the youth prize. So also this means that we are going on the right track and that we are introducing new writers for the Arab world. So that had also a great meaning. Uh, this is great. I mean, congratulations. It's, it's quite astonishing. I have had a chance to talk with your father, by the way, Mohammed. He's terrific. And uh, he's yes. with, I know he's um, well, great uh, with the leadership of the Arab Publishers Association. Uh, yes, which is he's, uh, he's the president of the Arab Publishers Association. Right. And he was the found, one of the founders of the Egyptian Publishers Association and the Arab Publishers Association also. Right, and I, I believe you're on the executive of the object of the Egyptian Publishers Association. Yes. Y yes, I used to be till uh -huh. from two months. Yes, uh -huh. I used to be a board <laughs> member, but I'm for the for for the time being, I'm the vice president of the Arab Children's Publisher Forum, uh, which is in Sharjah. So I'm the yeah. vice president of the of the Arab Children's Publishers Forum. That one's going to keep you quite busy, I'm sure. So it sounds to me like you have a lot going on. But this is this is great that you have this depth of experience. And, and I, I like the things that you're talking about in terms of how the awards attention, in fact, not only raises the, the visibility, of course, and the profile of the work and of the authors as it should and of the publisher as it should, I should say, but it also sends messages to you. As you were saying with the youth author, it means that that signal to you says we're doing the right thing. We're finding the young writers yes. who need the attention and bringing them to the public. Uh, because that's, that's one thing we want to talk about in our conversation is basically what is the new work? What are people looking at these days that's contemporary and fresh? Yes. And a lot of that's coming from younger writers, yeah? 
Yeah, uh, I, I need to tell you also that uh, we formed a series of bookstores from two years. So I'm also a retailer now. So I can tell you even better because I'm not only a publisher, I'm a retailer also. That's incredible. So now you're getting everything but sleep. I understand this problem myself. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, though. <laughs> At least you're not getting off into the things you shouldn't. So you're, you're staying busy and it's great. This is good to hear. Um, Renat, let's, let's return to you for a moment because I, I know that we were, we were talking about um, and, and what Ahmed is touching on is making me realize we need to get back to this topic too. In general, beyond the, the uh, Sheikh Zayed Book Award, which is so fantastic, um, how, how much do you think awards themselves in, in the general way are having an effect on bringing Arabic to the rest of the world. There are several other um, uh, pretty strong awards. Nothing is as major as the Sheikh Zayed, but there are some very strong awards and then very well-known awards uh, operating in the region now. Is, is this helping in general? Does this kind of attention tend to lift Arabic literature to people's attention in other parts of the world? Yes, indeed, as we were uh, saying, uh, awards um, in a way have increased the number of publishing in the Arab world even. Uh, uh, because as um, we are saying in the uh, awards is a kind of um, a solid money to support uh, publishers, writers, illustrators, and uh, so on. Uh, and this is, of course, will uh, give uh, the room uh, for everyone to uh, be more uh, creative in a way and maybe uh, to be more uh, experimental. But the thing that I would like uh, to um, mention as well, uh, and it is connected maybe to the situation in the Arab world, uh, that the economic situation um, is not that uh, good. Uh, so sometimes, uh, and okay, uh, now this book is a winning book, but that, that does not mean uh, that it's uh, uh, always in terms of uh, selling is good. But definitely it is um, uh, more of uh, attention to the book uh, in the publishing maybe community, more of attention from the researchers on this book and how this book is uh, um, helping in reading and promotion and so on. But from our experience does not mean that it sells always in a very good uh, uh, way. So it's not kind of a, um, a golden sticker uh for selling as well but definitely maybe in terms of translation i would uh, see i would uh, say from our experience you know it is kind of um, an opportunity to be uh, exposed uh, world uh, wide now when it comes to children's uh, book as, as you were saying uh, like you know when a child would go to a bookshop maybe the illustration would be the first uh, to be attractive uh, for the child. So it's different like when we are talking about uh, a young adult's novel or uh, an adult book. So for picture books, I would uh, look at the award from different perspective in terms of evaluation, in terms of selection and so on. Uh, for us as a Tamir Institute, we are uh, promoting the child perspectives in every way and in every uh, mean. And we do uh, feel that children should be even part of this selection process uh, uh, within this award. So the, there should be a mechanism where our children also participate in this selection. Uh, you know, uh, the golden stickers uh, that we have on the winning uh, box sometimes would attract uh, the fathers, the mothers, the families, the adults, the teachers, but not necessarily uh, the children. So that's why it's important to have the child perspective in this selection. So I think this is really promote uh, the award more and more in terms of testing and in terms of um, you know, having the child perspective in this uh, way. 
And with the picture uh, box, I do feel uh, it should be an award not only for the writer, but also to the illustrators and to the editors and to the uh, publisher, because they are all together uh, uh, putting this book, uh, you know, and bringing it to uh, life and bringing it to the society, to community, to children, to the readers. Uh, um, and this is maybe hey, something that, um, um, any, to something to look at it or to think about it uh, when it comes uh, to um, awards uh, in relation to books for children and uh, young adults. So it's very good to have also uh, the readers of this category part of the selection uh, process. Um, as I was saying, maybe it's not a definite but definitely also from our experience, you know, definitely we have uh, awards from uh, different parts of, um, um, you know, uh, places, whether it is it is a lot or El Multaqa uh, for uh, the children's uh, publishing uh, or Sheikh Zaid. Definitely it varies. Uh, it depends on the book. Um, Although it is uh, yani a winning book, but does not mean it's gonna be also uh, a good selling uh, book. We, we see this uh, uh, all over the world, actually. We talk about a book that is a critical success, but not a market success because the public never seemed to catch on. Um, some, of the, some of the most um, bittersweet stories you see are books that are highly praised by critics and by awards programs when they come out. And years later, they find an audience and suddenly there are sales everywhere. And that can be very exciting when it happens too. But yes, we, we see this tendency too. I think partly it's also a matter of an award which now is happening with the Sheikh Zayed because this is its 16th season. And now it is starting to get enough traction and visibility itself in the world that I believe it's going to be even more supportive and powerful of its winners uh, going forward. But it takes a while. It takes years just for an award to become known enough uh, for people to respond to it and to pay attention to what is being selected. I, I love going back to one thing you said. I love the idea of involving the children um, in the process. There, there's, um, there's a great uh, understanding now in our educational system here in the States that it's very important to let kids choose their own books. And in that way, you get much better reading because they know what they want and they'll find what they're looking for. And they're more committed to it when they've picked a book rather than the teacher saying, here, you have to read this. And, and in, in France, there's of course a very, um, very famous example uh, in the Prix Goncourt Lycée where the, the students in the high school sector are actually choosing um, the author they like and the book they like. And this is considered a very valuable award by the authors too, because it means, going back to what Ahmed was saying, it means that the younger readers are following an author and paying attention. And that can be great news for anybody's career. So I love hearing you talk about that. I think it's great that you're using this process of such complete involvement with the younger readers. That's super. Um, Ahmed, tell me a little about your, your experience in terms of sales versus, as we say, critical acclaim. Have you had good sales from awards? Uh, yes, but uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I love the expression of Rinad about the golden sticker. Uh, <laughs> look, <laughs> for, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a very lovely expression. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how do I see Sheikh Zaid Award. I think Sheikh Zaid Award had, had passed on different levels. The first level was starting from 2000, maybe seven, 2006 till 2014, 15. Publishers were fo focused more on two things. First, the PR. Second, uh, the, the amount of the awards. That was the main two focuses, I think, was at the beginning of the prize. And maybe uh, Sheikh Zayed Award made a, a lovely PR for this prize. Uh, the second, uh, the, the second, uh, the second uh, change was starting from 2015, 2016. Uh, uh, the, the award to be more well known to uh, foreign publishers and how publishers might be attracted 
to our fiction. I think uh, this makes sense about the changes in the market even after the 2011, because there was a, a big transition in the Arabic market, in, mar uh, market after 2011 and the Arab Spring. Uh, contemporary fiction uh, had taken place a lot. The social media changes in reading habits. I think that was one of the reasons that attracted uh, foreign publishers to uh, Arabic literature or Arabic fiction. Maybe uh, uh, Sheikh Zayed a word after 2016, 2017, when they uh, felt the fund they gave for translation, I think helped a, a lot. Uh, they gave a big fund around to 20,000 US dollars. And by the way, it helped because uh, I'm one of the publisher who won the prizes and I sold till now more than three contracts for uh, for the, the winning books. So I think um, we as a publisher uh, think that the golden sticker for us now is translation. And I think this is the big success. And maybe for the writers, the money and the PR, because uh, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, there, is, there isn't any book, uh, even if it's sold, a uh, thousand of copies can give you royalties with this amount of price. So I think uh, uh, always uh, writers are willing to win this prize either for PR or for wealthness. For publishers, I think the main thing for them is now is for translation and of course PR. That's my point of view about uh, the prize. This is such good news for the rest of us and the rest of the world, because what you're saying is that this new value, uh, the, the later value that's developed, is not only good for you, of course, because of the translation, but it's good for us because it means we can start reading the material. You know, for yes. if, if you had said to me, it means wonderful sales, but only here in the Arab region, that would leave us out. And I think that those of us who understand how important Arabic is and how rich that culture is, we want to read more of what you've got. So this is great news because that 20,000 US dollars is a big help on getting it translated for us. Yes? Yes, but and also I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll add to what you, you were talking with Renat about was that um, um, not all the prizes make good sales in the Arabic market. Uh, mm -hmm. even, even I'll tell you something, even uh, always the boost is for Booker Prize, for example, for fiction, that whenever a, a book wins the Booker, uh, it sells a lot. That's not, uh, that's not now uh, what's happening. Sometimes some books win even the Booker and they don't sell. So the taste of the uh, readers who read bestsellers is different somehow from the strategy of prizes. That's, that's an important thing we have to think about. Maybe um, Sheikh Zaid Award try, uh, always tries to make this compromising, it, to make uh, a book which could be uh, suitable for uh, uh, foreign readers or uh, suitable for Arabic readers or uh, it's, 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 uh, it's an excellent in writing and it's, it's, it's written in a good way which could, which could deserve that it can uh, win a prize. So I think this uh, uh, this doesn't happen in all prizes. Maybe Sheikh Zayed tries to do this, tries to make this compromising. I, I'm sure that's a consideration. Uh, the, the scientific committee and the board work very hard on these selections. And I know that they're very aware of the fact that not only do we want to find the very best literature, but we're doing it so that it gets higher visibility. And that means that at times there must be some consideration as to how the public will see this and understand it and want to read it. It, it gets us to the point that I was, I was mentioning, and I think we'll, we'll go back to Renat for a minute on this, um, about what is selling. The, because we, we, have a, we have a concept now in the United States that there is a great, a great valuable sector of literature, sometimes called commercial fiction which is not necessarily the best term, I'm afraid, but it means very high quality material that in some settings would be thought of as literary fiction, but in others, because it sells, because it has a place in the public's heart, um, simply seems to be more viable in the marketplace. And I think what you're talking about, that compromise is very tricky at times to get something that's truly of high value 
but that also has that access to the minds and the hearts of the public. It's a, it's a fine line. Uh, Renat, talk to us a little bit about what you see selling these days. What is popular, as you understand it, in, in your part of the region? What do, you, what do you think is going out there in the stores? Hmm. So when, as a Timber Institute, we do not consider ourselves as a publishing and we are uh, for profit. Right. We are more for uh, promoting uh, reading and writing for children and young adults. So whatever we publish, uh, it goes uh, to the community through uh, our network of uh, uh, libraries, of community libraries and school libraries. Mm -hmm. So I think in the Arab uh, world, uh, we need uh, to enhance the culture of reading. So, and I think the awards really should also pay attention, so much attention to uh, improve and enrich this culture of reading uh, in the Arab uh, world. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, if we are looking at uh, Palestine, Palestine definitely under occupation. Palestine is suffering from uh, economic situation and lots of, uh, you know, limitation to uh, uh, basic resources to water, electricity, and so on. So the books will the books will not come first uh, in my uh, country. Not because we uh, do not appreciate or we do not look at uh, reading and ed and education as um, a mean of liberation. Definitely, we are looking at reading as a mean of liberation for uh, us uh, in Palestine but our economic situation does not help. So we as an organization have this mandate to distribute our uh, books to community libraries. So we have kind of um, equal opportunities for children to reach out and then borrow uh, these books and uh, so on. So maybe like when I'm talking about uh, the trends, I can uh, connect it to the, uh, our yeah. network of libraries in terms of borrowing more than in terms of selling. So this is yani, an aspect that uh, I would like to highlight. And you know, it's very important for us in the Arab world to promote the culture of reading. And this is, of course, needs uh, policies and the strategies from Ministry of Education, Ministry of Culture, uh, you know, all over uh, the Arab uh, countries. There should be kind of budget uh, that goes to uh, book purchase within the schools. And unfortunately, if you look at uh, you know, the budgets of the Ministry of Education within different Arab uh, countries, you will not find it because again of the economic situation uh, that we uh, live, but also maybe some of the uh, command countries do not look at reading as, uh, uh, as you know, a self building and as a self liberation and so on. So it's very important also um, uh, uh, to promote the value of reading, uh, to promote the critiques around uh, the box. And I think uh, uh, if we enrich this um, uh, culture of uh, uh, critiques, definitely this uh, will have kind of more uh, uh, prospects for uh, reading uh, culture and uh, so on. Uh, so in terms of uh, yani, uh, what I see from uh, community libraries, you know, children would love a picture box uh, that do not tell them what to do and what and not uh, to do, you know. And definitely children are looking for books that enrich their imagination that, you know, can identify themselves with what is happening uh, around uh, the world. Definitely young people uh, or young adults when they uh, find a novel and this novel talks about uh, them through uh, the characters in the novel, definitely it is kind of something that uh, connect to them. And if it is uh, uh, taking uh, the perspective that we started with the child perspective or the young uh, children's perspective, it's gonna be a good book. If this book, you know, uh, builds up uh, based on their needs, but not on what we want to uh, uh, tell them or uh, teach them, uh, you know, it will not be uh, a good uh, book. So children have uh, definitely their uh, own taste and they know themselves and they know what they like and where, uh, what they do not uh, like. 
So sometimes, you know, also the market and uh, uh, the book purchase uh, more of a control by the mother, by the family more than the children them, them uh, selves. So this is something also that we need to uh, look at it. If we want to promote this culture of reading, we need to have the children and the young people, uh, our uh, uh, partner, or uh, they need to pick the book that they uh, uh, intend to uh, buy or read and so on. Uh, in terms of the trends, definitely now the comics box is a trend. Uh, you know, uh, for the young people. Uh, although it was very um, uh, famous in 70s and 80s in Arab world, and then it uh, completely disappeared, now it's becoming uh, back. So it is kind of a trend for uh, young people and for uh, children the way that I see it. Uh, novels, definitely novels also is something that interests uh, uh, the young adults, uh, as well as we said, about picture books, uh, picture books that carry uh, 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 imagination, uh, you know, uh, that respect the child and respect their uh, critical thinking, uh, uh, books that bring existential questions and discussing these existential questions without one answering and only one answer. And no books that in a way uh, open the world uh, for those uh, children and not just uh, giving them one direction or one answer in, uh, you know, um, yani this is my reflection, like a quick reflection. This, this, is, this is very interesting and, and it's, I'm, I'm intrigued by how much it parallels some of the other markets in the world that we're talking to. I think everybody is having the experience you are of the children who, who don't want to be told everything. They, I think parents, and it's very understandable, but I think parents sometimes rely on books to teach children what to do and what to think, you know, and that, that pedagogical, that teaching instinct gets in the way sometimes because the child wants to create a world, as we say, wants to actually imagine what's out there. Um, the comics connection is very interesting. Uh, Italy is talking a lot about comics now. France has always been a great center of comics. Now Italy is seeing comics, particularly through manga. Uh, they're very interested in that. The kids go into the bookstores and ask for it. Suddenly the booksellers are stocking up like crazy because the kids are very into that and regular comics. And what they're loving is that sometimes the, the, the younger adults who are into graphic novels will go into a bookstore, get something like that they want, and then come out in, in the example that's been given to me with a copy of James Joyce's Ulysses as well. They're looking at very difficult books, but they're there because they were right beside each other. You know, they saw a comic, they saw a graphic novel, they saw something attractive, and they saw James Joyce here, you know, and maybe they're interested in that. So it's fascinating how in some cases you can lead people from one kind of literature to another. And I think sometimes that younger people are more open to this than we adults who get kind of stuck in our way and say, oh, I don't want to read James Joyce. I'm here for the comic book. It's, this is very interesting that you're seeing these trends. And I do like, I, I like your perspective, not in sales, as you say, because you're nonprofit, but in terms of what's being taken in, in libraries, because this is just as valid. This is telling us what the population is interested in. Uh, just without the sales mechanism, instead with library lending. Uh, it's a perfectly valid way to understand the mind of a community. Uh, as you say, a community under great pressure, as the Palestinian uh, community is. So thank you for that. Uh, Ahmed, we, we come back to you. Um, uh, can yeah? I just, uh, can I Please. interrupt, sorry? There's a saying for uh, Astrid Bender Green, the Swedish uh, writer. Yeah. Uh, a good, uh, it's uh, connected, there are lots of saying for her, but there is this one that is connected to a good book. What is a good book? It's the book that puts the word uh, in the heart of the child and put the heart and uh, put the child in the heart of the word. So this is, I always see it, that is a very good definition for a good book. So this is what we need for our children and young adults. Uh, to put the word inside their heart and to put them inside the word, yeah, at the heart of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very wise. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very compassionate way to understand the value of reading and to 
to build on, again, to use an Italian phrase, the reading habit, what, what Italy is trying to work with, with its government, as you're saying, its ministries, is to understand how important it is to create the reading habit for that population. This is, and they're not alone, uh, uh, many. <laughs> we would like a much better reading habit in the United States, I can tell you that. So you're not alone in that regard. So thank you again for that. Um, Ahmed, as we come back to you then, we're, we're talking to the for-profit sector with uh, your publishing experience and, and the, the great successes that you're having. But tell us about sales and tell us about what you see in the market as being popular these days. Look, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you, maybe I have a different perspective because I'm, a, as I told you, I'm a general publisher. Yeah. Uh, but, but at the same time, there are uh, some common problems in the publishing industry in the Arab world. Mm -hmm. Look, the publishing industry in the Arab world uh, have a, a big uh, lake of support from Arabic governments. Uh, low budgets, uh, low support uh, in taxes, uh, low support in purchase from publishers, uh, even from, from libraries. Um, always, always, always they deal with a book as it's something um, for pleasure, not something very important for community. And maybe, maybe this, um, I'll, I'll tell you a small story. I've been working in, in Australia, Lebanon, publishing house from 2007. So like 14 or 15 years. I can remember uh, at that time uh, when I took the decision to work in this publishing house with my father and to run the companies, then that I'm not interested uh, in working with governments, working with uh, uh, institutes because uh, I, I'm 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 uh, I, I don't think that they will continue to support. Maybe uh, you see that they support, but at the same time they don't support enough the market. That's why I'll take a new trend to work on trade publishing, to work with readers directly, to work with the distribution uh, to readers, not working with institution. And to tell you something. Um, we are running. Uh, we are running a company. One of the one of the biggest company having employees uh, in the Arab world. We are having more than one hundred employer in our publishing house to, uh, to 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 be in the market and to be working after two thousand and eleven with this huge number of employees and not to fire anyone. Uh, the reason was working in trade publishing, uh, working on uh, social media working on selling online. That's the main support for our publishing house. And still, we are facing problems. For, 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 for example, uh, trade publishing takes place around 70% of our publications now. But at the same time, we're facing problems like piracy, for example. In Egypt, piracy in uh, Iraq, piracy in Lebanon, in different countries. Of course, this is one of the main uh, struggles we're always facing. And that's even sometimes um, I write in, in uh, or make some interviews on TV or newspaper and tell, I don't want from the government's money. I don't want money. I want them even to support us uh, with new laws, support us with decreasing taxes, uh, support us with different means of support, not just to, to give money for libraries or schools and uh, purchase books. That's not our problem. We need uh, another uh, mean of support now for the publishing industry because publishing industry in the last uh, maybe 10 years are, uh, I think uh, everything, everything is changing. Many publishing house ha houses have been closed even in the last three from this weak support. So, um, um, uh, uh, so th that's, that's one thing. Another thing, uh, if you are telling me what works uh, in the publishing industry, I'll tell you uh, there are different things. Uh, even sometimes when some reports comes and say that people in the Arabic world, uh, the percentage, uh, maybe uh, uh, Arabic reader eat, uh, reads to, I, I read like a report from two or three years saying that uh, Arabic readers read like two hours per year. This is not true. There are a lot of readers but we, we, can't, we can't till now uh, uh, see uh, or uh, make some uh, 
reports saying the actual number of readers and the actual number of hours read by the Arabic reader, but still there are readers. Uh, they are focused more on reading fiction, uh, focused on reading self-development, focused on reading philosophy, history. Uh, they are the main four or five trends for me. For children books, for example, uh, till now, uh, the focus is more from institutions and governments than uh, parents to buy uh, books. And when I'm comparing, for example, I'll tell you, I have some, for example, some novels selling more than 50,000 copies uh, per year. And other, for example, some successful books, for example, in children or in, uh, in whatever category is, uh, don't sell even 200 copies per year. So uh, there is a big difference uh, in sales between fiction uh, um, and self-development, especially, and, uh, and other categories in sales of uh, publishing. Uh, translation, uh, some, some translation, some commercial, uh, commercial titles now sells, uh, sells a lot uh, translated in the, in the Arabic market, for example, uh, 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 many books had been translated from the U.S. market, for example, in the Arabic world in the last two years. They were very commercial and they sold a lot, especially in self-help and self-development. So uh, market, market that, that's, the main, that, that's the main thing that are working. But still, there are categories that uh, appears from a time to another. For example, in the last uh, five years, uh, uh, classics started to work uh, better than before. Uh, philosophy is selling, as I as I had mentioned, is selling it's selling good. So there are some categories comes ups and downs, but the stable thing is always the fiction and self development and some translation uh, from other markets. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you, you know who else is selling a lot of self help is China. Uh, they're fascinated by it. They have a massive market and a great hunger for self-help, self-development, uh, self-improvement. They, they love this. So, so I've, I've seen this in, in other parts of the world. And you're, 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 it's very interesting when you talk about piracy and about the trade as opposed to the institutional connections. Um, because mm. in the African markets, there's, there's a change going like you're talking about. The change there that's underway is reflecting yours about piracy. They need law enforcement. Um, they actually have some very good laws in countries like Kenya, but they find that the authorities won't enforce them. They won't come after the pirates and they won't actually look for the people who are behind the problem and try to take care of it. So yes, we have, to, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, no. Uh, there is a law, for example, in Egypt, there is a law. Yep. Uh, but it's from 2002, from more than 20 years, yep. and even it's a weak law, so it's to be changed. And even I'll tell you something, when I was in the uh, uh, Egyptian Publishers Association, for example, mm -hmm. and, even, uh, and even my father as the president of the Arab Publishers Association, we made these amendments for several times in the last six or seven years, and now there is no change. Maybe we submit the law for the parliament uh, every year, and then they postpone it. That's the, 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 the main problem we are facing in the Arab world is that we see that reading is it's not something uh, in priority. If uh, governments uh, thought about this, that it's a priority, I think th things would be changed and even publishing industry will improve more. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. And this, this is, it, it's a common problem. You're, I, all I can say is you're not alone. Um, even in copyright issues, we find that a great many governments are unwilling to pay attention to this and to get to it. They, as you say, they don't think it's important. They see it as something that's entertainment, that's maybe just done by a few people. I think you're talking about needing more data, as you're saying, on how many readers are actually there and reading and sensitive to this. That would impress a government. Um, and so perhaps more, more of that can be developed so that the population is studied more. But the other thing I was going to tell you about in Africa that's so parallel to yours is that for a long time, the markets there have been given primarily to textbooks, educational work, very good work, as a matter of fact. 
But now some of the women-led publishing houses, this is an idea women are having there, it's great. Uh, Bibi Bakare Youssef is one of the best that we talked to. They're leading the, the entire industry toward the trade because they want to get away from the government funding of the textbooks, the government control of the textbooks. You know, every, every, when you're working with the government, you're working I, I, for I, the government. I, I'll, tell you, yeah. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you something. When I, I thought about this from 15 years, my yeah. father was telling me, you're kidding. You're, to, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're searching about for, for peanuts. And uh, at the same time, we're working with the governments and Ministry of Education and working with in different sectors. And you're, you're kidding. You're having fun. Now, as I told you, if I, uh, if I, 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 I was working on this strategy, uh, f f definitely I lapsed. Definitely, I, I was collapsed from two or three years minimum. So, so uh, things are changing. Yeah, and dad is impressed, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he's very proud of this. You know, it's, it's fascinating to see that evolution. I, don't, I, I know I mustn't keep you guys too much longer. Now so, he's asking for more, yeah. yeah. yeah now he's see? asking for more treats. <laughs> you see, exactly. Yeah, that's great. It's wonderful how you're doing this. And, and Lastly, because I, I, I've kept you guys too long, I'm afraid, I just want to see if I can touch quickly with each of you on where things are in terms of the pandemic effect right now. We, we talked a good bit, in fact, you and I talked extensively last year, Ahmed, about this um, at the time of the Abu Dhabi Book Fair. Um, now I'd like to check back in with both of you and see, do you see um, um, some kind of turnaround as yet? Do you see some movement beyond the pandemic effects on publishing? And, and what is the situation where you are? Uh, Reynad, could we start with you again? In, in Palestine, has the pandemic had an effect on your operation, certainly in education and books? And is there a change as yet? Are, are things getting better? Hmm. Uh, yeah, as you were saying, uh, the effect, I think, uh, everywhere. Uh, from the pandemic on uh, book sellings and so on and in the market uh, as well. Uh, like, you know, if we are, uh, if, I, uh, and if I'm looking at our experience as a Tamer Institute, definitely like in terms of book sales, uh, it went so uh, down, uh, like, you know, it went like minus 70% of what we had before uh, 2020. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, the numbers, definitely they go uh, down uh, tremendously. Uh, that's one uh, level. And of course, it, uh, during the last two years, uh, the book uh, fairs uh, were not uh, there anymore. Uh, even at the local level, definitely they were all uh, canceled. Uh, uh, yeah, and this is also uh, definitely something that affected our um, uh, life in uh, the sense of, um, you know, distribution in terms of exposure and participating in different book fairs and uh, so uh, on. But on the other hand, uh, during the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, definitely we start to be uh, more attention to technology as a, a book can be distributed through uh, social uh, media. So many of our books um, uh, have been transformed to animated uh, stories. Uh, so families can uh, see it through the different social medias. And in terms of our Facebook, uh, before the pandemic, like we used to have 36 followers, but after the pandemic right now we have uh, 122 uh, followers. And we do think because of this uh, continuous uh, production of books for our uh, audience. And our audience uh, uh, was not limited to a Palestinian uh, audience. It became now uh, an audience everywhere around the world for um, people who speaks uh, the Arabic language, because mainly we are publishing in uh, Arabic. So if you look at the uh, data from uh, Google and so on. So you, we can see this kind of uh, uh, wide, um, in a way, uh, presentation and audience from different uh, parts of the uh, world. So uh, maybe as we were saying in terms of sales, it went down, but in terms of audience and reaching out, 
uh, worldwide uh, and definitely it became uh, wider and bigger. Uh, and right now, within the last two years, we have our books uh, that you can purchase through our uh, website directly. So you know, definitely it was a challenge and we try to uh, transform these uh, challenges to a good opportunity in terms of uh, distribution, in terms of um, uh, reaching out uh, to uh, different uh, audience uh, in uh, the different uh, countries around uh, the world. Uh, so there's definitely uh, this opportunity that came with uh, the pandemic. This is so good to hear. And it, it's smart of you, of course, to take advantage of social media. And it's also good at a moment when there are a lot of problems with social media. You know, in, in particularly, we find a lot of disinformation. We find people behaving badly in many ways. And it, it's good to remember at times that social media really do give us some wonderful access to the rest of the world, too. We can reach out. We can get a bigger audience, go right across the borders, talk to each other, and read each other's work and see each other's animations, which is kind of great too. That's very smart to go that way. So thank you for that. And uh, Ahmed, I think we're coming to you probably for the last comment here. Tell me where you see things right now from where you sit in your company about the pandemic, its effect and how things look now. Better? Yes, of course. Of course, the pandemic had affected the, <laughs> the Arabic region and the whole world uh, a lot. As we talked uh, about for the yeah. Arabic. Yes, yeah, but for the Arabic industry, uh, uh, um, uh, for example, one of the main problems from the COVID was, for example, canceling the book fairs. And book fairs are one of the main one of the main ways to sell our books. You know that the book fairs in the Arabic world is different than foreign world in 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 means of uh, selling. We sell books, and you sell rights in your in, in your book fair. So closing these book fairs or, uh, or uh, uh, canceling these book fairs had affected the market a lot. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think there was two types or three types of publishers. Some publishers wasn't, um, uh, wasn't uh, uh, on the right track for social media and selling through websites and these th things. I think many of them uh, uh, were struggling a lot. Some of them closed already. Uh, uh, but for the publisher who were who were, who were working on social media and selling through selling online, I think they had. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm not telling you that they had uh, had many profits, but at the same time, uh, they uh, they had somehow they can um, 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 work or things might go in in good way better than others. For example, for us. In 2015, we started working on social media and even outsourcing marketing agency for our uh, our pages. That was uh, uh, a way. Starting from 2020, even before the COVID, we were working on media buying, and that was the way of selling our books. First, where we were just promoting our book and our events, everything on social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, Twitter. But afterwards, no, we were working on you. For, for the time being, for example, I'm focusing more on media buying. That's why, for example, in the time being, I formed a new website uh, for us, uh, for selling even publication, other publication, and even some English books. So, and connecting this with our social media and media buying. So I think things are getting much more better because for example, in Egypt, we have a lake of bookshops, lake of bookstores. Uh, uh, there's a few number of bookstores, even in the Arab world. So uh, selling online is a way. Uh, another thing, selling eBooks uh, through different platforms. Uh, where we were dealing with different um, uh, different uh, platforms. For example, I'll tell you Amazon, the sales of Amazon from 2020 till 2022 is more than three times than before. Mm. Uh, for example, there are some local platforms like Abjad, for example, uh, a Jordanian uh, company uh, run by Iman Halouz, one of the great entrepreneurs in the Arab is saying much more better. 
So I think this is was one of the ways we were we were selling. Uh, for um, other other ways, we were focusing on, for example, forming some uh, some fairs in uh, some clubs, for example, an open space, open area uh, for selling our products and even selling others' products. I think this helped us a lot. Uh, things are not, as I told you, things are not uh, perfect, but at the same time, we're still uh, in the market. We're still there. We're still uh, working. And I think this is the only X door for any publisher to keep on going. Uh, he have no other way in the Arabic market to keep, and even in the world, uh, unless he have to change, have to change the way of presenting his materials, have to change uh, the way of selling products mm -hmm. or books. Well, it's thanks, it's thanks to the entrepreneurial spirit that we hear in you, Ahmed, and that we hear in Renaud, looking at these new ways to do things, leveraging the online world to your advantage, that, that in fact you are still here, as you say, and that you're growing and you will be even stronger as we keep moving beyond the pandemic. Um, your point about book fairs is so important. I, 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 I want to make a, an interesting point here that the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair and the Sheikh Zayed Book Award both are produced by the Abu Dhabi Arabic Language Center which is interesting. Uh, Dr. Ali uh, Ben Tamim and his team really understand this problem. They know the book fairs have to get up. And that's why last year, Abu Dhabi was one of the first to get back up on its feet and start going. Sharjah was very quick to this too. They kept going right through the pandemic, very difficult to do, um, but this was important. People needed these book fairs. Um, a, a great deal of funding work look, is being done now to help with this, and that's important. You're right. Look, look, I have to, I have to tell you, I have to tell you something. Uh, uh, whether Sharjah or whether Abu Dhabi or even you is a good port culture, bad governments. Uh, to be frankly speaking, uh, say it again for us. We had a little trouble with your audio. To do, say, uh, say what you just said, Ahmed. Say it again to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sharjah uh, or Abu Dhabi, uh, they are doing a great job uh, better than other governments. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how did they did, did this? For example, in the pandemic, for the book fairs, they canceled uh, uh, booths. For example, they gave support for purchasing uh, books, uh, working on their professional programs, and that's something much more better. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't plan. For example, for you, uh, one of the reason to sell uh, our copyrights beside uh, Abu Dhabi, for example, was Sharjah professional program. The support they give, even if it's not a big support for each book, it helps because he brings any publisher or any agent from the foreign world to Sharjah. This means that these are keen for selling, for buying rights from the Arabic publishers. So uh, there is great projects in Sharjah and Abu Dhabi in this sector, not only purchasing and not only uh, giving funds uh, for, uh, uh, for, 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 for routers or whatever, but also for uh, the professional program they make for Arabic publishers. It's great to hear. It's wonderful to hear a vote of support like that from somebody who is as well versed in all of this as you are, Ahmed. So thank you for that comment. And for all of your comments, and Renaud, thank you for everything you've given us. I, I, we could go on for another hour. This is such a great conversation. I, I really appreciate the inputs that both of you have brought us. Um, we'll have to do it again, and we'll pick up where we stopped and keep talking. Um, and I will see you at the International Book Fair in Abu Dhabi very shortly. I'm looking forward to that. As we uh, conclude here then, I want to say again, thank you to our guests, uh, Renaud Kubaj, of the Tamar Institute in Palestine and Ahmed Rashad, who is with uh, Dar al Mazria al Lubanina in uh, Egypt. Both of you have been terrific. I love everything that you've given us. It's very helpful in understanding the importance of awards like the Sheikh Zayed Book Award, which has brought us this program today. And we want to thank Sheikh Zayed and the team there for making this possible. Um, I am Porter Anderson, the editor in chief of Publishing Perspectives Magazine. And we hope you'll be back with us on our next program. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.